Welcome to a special Black is Beautiful episode of... Brutal Battle. So some people may be saying Black is Beautiful. Didn't that collaboration effort start like many, many, many months ago? And you would be correct. So you would probably then be asking yourself, why are Carlin and Rebecca just now doing an episode with Black is Beautiful beers? Well, happened during a pandemic. Not necessarily easy to get a hold of these beers, honestly. Because we got a very limited number of ones that showed up in our area. And actually, one of them I got through other means. Another one I got through other means. And one we got specifically at the brewery itself. And one we got at a uh, liquor store. And when we went and got it at the liquor store, there were only like two. You know, there was one Black is Beautiful from... One brewery and one from one other brewery. Two, so. two different variants. And part of the reason for that being, it was a collaboration effort, but it was kind of left open to the breweries. Like, you release it whenever you have time, basically, or whenever you want to. Because a lot of breweries kind of have brewing schedules, so they would need to figure out, you know, when to work that in, what works best for them. So, I saw Black is Beautiful beers trickling out from breweries for a long time. And I think most recently I saw someone just releasing it, like, in December of 2020. It was either, like, no- November or December. I saw it on social media. Can't remember what brewery it was, but, yeah. So, um, so basically, these all have the exact same label, which you, you will see in the picture if you go to the website. And there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that. Um, but it's four different breweries that we have. We couldn't get one from every brewery who participated because it's... Over a thousand breweries that participated. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so that would be impossible. But we'll taste through these beers and we'll just kind of talk. I'll, I'll just give a little bit of information after each beer about, you know, the program or the collaboration, basically, and where it originated and all that. So let's start with our first one, and that is Black is Beautiful. <laughs> they're, yeah. They're all called that. Uh, and three of these are just a straight-up Imperial Stout, and one of them... They added coffee to it. So we're doing that one last because if there are coffee notes in the first three, we don't want the actual coffee from the final one to just blow that out. So the first one is by Monument City Brewing Company, and Monument City is out of Baltimore, Maryland. So this is our local one. uh, We put in one local beer, uh, and this Black is Beautiful is 10%. And they're all in 16-ounce cans as well. So... Let's see how Monument City did it. A little bit for you. It's very dark. Very dark head. A little bit for me. Yeah, this one looking pretty viscous as it's being poured out. Which, you know, for an Imperial Stout, that's what you want to see. Yeah, super dark. Yeah, it's got a decent size head to it. Mixture of small, medium, large bubbles all sitting there. Yeah, it just looks like an Imperial Stout. Actually, like, when you swirl it up... It's thick. Yeah, it's like chocolate milky type bubbles on the top. It's got a chocolate milk head to it, which looks very enticing, honestly. Ooh, it smells hoppy, actually. I actually was thinking the first sniff I got was like, this smells hoppy. This is deceptive because I was assuming to go in and just be like, oh, I'm sure there's, like, a lot of chocolate. Chocolate. Maybe some coffee, some ashiness. No. It's pretty hoppy in the smell. I mean, That's there's kind like of all I'm getting. There's a hint of a citrus to it. There's a grassy note. There is a uh, floral aspect to it. Huh. I'm just getting yeah, just all the hop characteristics. There is a very slight type soy sauce note at the very end of each sniff. But yeah, this smells like a very hoppy stout uh, in comparison to you know how hoppy stouts usually smell. It smells good. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of um, Victory Storm King. Mm -hmm. Now, that's usually a pretty hoppy Imperial Stout. It reminds me of that smell-wise, which is exciting because if it tastes anything like Storm King, it's going to be great because Storm King is very good. Mm. You get some of the chocolate on the the taste, rather. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A little sweetness. It's definitely coming off hoppy. But there's definitely, yeah. The mouth is, it's it's creamy, but it it's not full-on creamy. It's just, like, kind of creamy on the mouth feel. Are you getting the sweetness? Mm-hmm. 
yeah, there's a definite sweetness to it, which I feel like is kind of folding into those like floral and citrusy hop notes. And then it kind of gives way to like a bit of a chalky ashiness in the finish with that dark chocolate note and then a bitter finish. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Um, it's easier than you would think for an yeah. imperial stout and a ten percent stout. Yeah, I'm not perceiving it. I'm not perceiving the ten percent at all. I mean, I get a little alcohol to it, but it's not. not it's not much. crazy. Yeah, you wouldn't know ten percent necessarily. I mean, it's coming off as like. That's good, I like that. Eight and a half, nine, maybe for me. Okay, so why was Black is Beautiful started, and who started it? So Marcus Baskerville is the person who started the Black is Beautiful collaboration. Now, he's with the brewery Weathered Souls. I believe he's head brewer and one of the owners, if not the only owner. I'm not sure. Um, but Weathered Souls, and they're out of San Antonio, Texas. So he uh, saw what was going on in the world with, you know, crying out for equality and inclusion as far as African Americans go in the United States, because obviously there are still too many... Uh, Issues with prejudice and racism in our country, um, not just having to do with African American individuals, but this is a focus on that uh, because obviously there's been a lot of a lot about it in the news. So he basically wanted to, to he was started thinking and he was like, "What can I do? What can I do to say that I made some sort of a difference?" So he came up with this idea to do Black is Beautiful as a way to you know get this label on the shelves and kind of start conversation around it because people come together for beer in the first place. And that's when friends come together, people socialize. And so if you have a conversation starter about an important, a important topic like this, and you see Makes this sense. can, it can start that conversation for the better. So he kind of threw it out there and said, um, here's the recipe. I'm, I, you know, I came up with this recipe. This is what it is. Here's the recipe. Here's the label. We left room on the label for you to put your own brewery logo and all that stuff. Um, feel free to, to be involved. Now, the only thing he was really asking with that is that all the proceeds from the sales of these beers went toward uh, charity organizations that would focus on inclusion and equality. And a lot of the times it was kind of um, pushed to be, you know, in their own communities, like in their own areas. But the breweries were allowed to choose where they were oh, going to okay. donate that to what specific charities, but it had to do with in inclusion and equality. So cool. Mm -hmm. It's a very good cause. Yeah. So a great origin to it. And obviously a lot of breweries uh, took part and we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that was the main chunk of the information on the program. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So our second black is beautiful is also 10% and is by the brewery. Yeah. Oh, and did I say that, uh, when the recipe was put out that they said you can do your own take on it if you want. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because there were some people arguing online I saw in, like, a beer group I'm in about, oh, they should have just done the base recipe. Like, it, I feel like it's disrespectful to change the recipe when it was intended to be this way. But literally on the website, I was on the website for the collaboration program, it literally says feel free to change the recipe as you like. Oh, okay. But the only thing they said is, you know, obviously donate – the proceeds to the charities. And they also said, we really ask that you use this specific label because, you know, once again, that was meant to be a specific label to start conversation. So, all right. So here we go with the, uh, the well, brewery. the label is different shades of black and browns. Yes. Yeah. Which is basically meant to be the showing of like the different tones of people who are considered to be black Americans, like different tones of, of skin. Mm-hmm. All right, here you go. There's yours. Let's see how this compares to the Monument City one. It looks very similar. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, also, you know, it's got that creamy head sticking around creamy on it. Creamy chocolate milk head. And actually, when you swirl it up, I feel like it creates even more of a head than the Monument City one did and makes it look even more kind of like milkshake-y, uh, chocolate This one is not hoppy. Yeah, this is not smelling hoppy. This is smelling, actually, I smell a good amount of, like, a caramel. There's definitely a sweetness to it, and there's definitely a lot of chocolate. Yeah, chocolate, caramel. 
it smells very light nose wise in comparison to the first one. Yeah, it, it's a little softer. It smells easy. Smells probably tasty. I do get a <laughs> little smells tasty. Yeah. It smells tasty. I'm sure they all will be, but it smells. I mean, I do smell a little bit of a hot presence, but it's kind of more on the normal, what you would assume for a stout. Yeah. So I went in for my first taste. I mean, it tastes just like a really good straight up Imperial Stout. Yeah. And I would say that it doesn't, like mouthfeel wise, it seems lighter than yeah. an Imperial and specifically 10%. Like it comes off as ABV wise, probably around eight for the viscosity of it. But it's more of just like dark, roasty. I taste that caramel. When I said I was smelling There's it. a decent bitterness. Yeah, there's a decent bitterness. It's, it's more of a bitterness than the first mm-hmm. one I had, the Monument City. Yeah, it finishes with a decent bitterness. It's got a little bit of that ashy finish on it. Ash, um, like chalky. Yeah, a lot of dark chocolate. Um, a little bit of a coffee roast note hanging out at the end of each sip as well. But up front, there's a bit of a sweetness. And I get that kind of caramel that I was saying I was getting on the nose. The caramel then kind of transitions to a dark chocolate. This is good. And um, again, for 10%, kind of too easy. Yeah. (laughs) Dangerously easy, I'd say. The bitterness is just a little too much for me, style-wise. So it does start to creep. It'll creep up a little yeah. bit on you as you continue to drink it. And I think that also as you continue to drink it, you start to perceive the alcohol in there a little bit more. It starts to get slightly astringent. But still good. I do enjoy it. So. Mm. So, just a little more information on this program. If you want to check out more information on this, you can go to blackisbeautiful.beer. And they just have all the information about it. You know, Marcus um, Baskerville has a bunch of stuff on there. And there's a short video. It's like an, uh, a minute and 40 seconds or something. Him talking and showing him brewing and kind of telling the origin of why he decided to do it. Which I think is it's powerful to hear directly from the person yeah. who started this. Um, to get their full inspiration. Because I told you some about it, but... The way I say it versus the way he says it, it's obviously very different. So to get it directly from his mouth sounds a lot better. So I would say go to that website, watch that, because once again, it's like a minute and 40 seconds. It's not a whole lot of time you're devoting to that. And it's a, once again, it's an important cause. So I then just wanted to say, as of now, and we we're recording on January 3rd of 2021, it, on the website, they have kind of a roster of all the breweries involved, and it is 1,192 breweries in 50 states in the United States and in 22 countries. Wow. So it's not just the United States. It's an international thing. So, And then you can go through on the bottom of that website and scroll through, and it's all alphabetized, all the breweries who have participated or are participating and so you can kind of check and see if your breweries are on there. That's cool. So you can do a bit of a search and see, you know, is my favorite brewery participating? So, yeah. So obviously not every brewery has participated. I wish they all would have, but who knows why they didn't. Anyway, okay. So now this will be a relatively quick episode for, for this reason. Um, the last or second to last beer. Sorry. Uh, This one is, once again, Imperial Stout. This is 8% alcohol. So we're taking a step down, which I would actually argue that at least initially, the brewery one tastes like 8%. But then after you sip it more, it's a little more. And the Monument City tastes like 8%. So this one is by The Alchemist. We got this one from Kyle Norman. So shout out to Kyle Norman, who gave us this one can of Black is Beautiful from The Alchemist. I have high expectations for this, because I have high expectations for all Alchemist. All right, here we go. Very excited for this one. I w- initially, I wanted to do this one last, because it's the Alchemist. But then I was like, no, we should probably do the, f- the last one last, because it has coffee added. And I don't want it to screw up the flavors of the other beers, if they're like coffee notes. 
So, all right, there you go. There's yours, Rebecca. Pour some for me. Oh, it's looking like the first two with that chocolate milk pillowy head. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it looks dark like an Imperial Stout. What do you know? Yep, and like the um, the brewery one, it that head, when you swirl it up, gets crazy thick. It looks like a milkshake, basically. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go in and smell it. Whoa! It smells really complex. Ooh. Okay, so it's kind of a bit like the um, the Monument City one, is in mm-hmm. it smells pretty hoppy. hoppy. Now, I was hoping for this coming from the Alchemist, because the nose kind of reminds me of one of their Imperial Stouts called Beelzebub, which, when we had it on the podcast many years ago, it basically tasted like a blend of a really nice Imperial Stout and a really nice uh, IPA. And that's kind of what this smells like. It smells even hoppier than the Monument City. There's a lot of malt in it. Yeah, there's a lot of malt sweetness. But there's also a ton of hoppiness, mm-hmm. and there's, it kind of does smell like the Monument City one, like there's a citrus to it, there's a floralness, there's a little bit of a grassy note. There's a little bit of a pine to it as well. It's kind of like all the typical hop mm-hmm. flavors. Are but then aromas. I'm also perceiving some chocolate. Yes, definitely. It's a very complex nose. Mm-hmm. This very. is the best nose, I think. Yeah, if it tastes exactly like it smells, I'm going to be unbelievably happy with it. But it also smells like it's not super thick. It smells kind of light at the same time, which I think has a lot to do with that hoppiness in the aroma. So you already tried. Mm -hmm. It tastes kind of like what we would expect. Like you're getting some of that hop characteristics. You're getting like that stout backbone with the maltiness and the chocolate. But Mm -hmm. also the hop, it's kind of um, a good balance. Dude, it is like a blast of hops. Mm -hmm. When you first taste it, and then it transitions to that Imperial Stout. Like, and I remember saying this about the Beelzebub. It's very much like their Beelzebub. It's like you're drinking two beers at the same time and experiencing them separately. Like, like I said, like it's the blast of the IPA aspect of it up front, and then it transitions to that Imperial Stout, and it ends with all those darker flavors. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that that's how it happened. Because it's literally like... Here you are. Experience the IPA. Stop. Now experience the Imperial Stout. Stout. Yeah. Um, it's good. very good. It's very interesting. And there is a bitterness on the end, but it's not... It's in check. I'm sure there are people out there who have never tried a beer like this in their life. It's interesting. That has this, this transition in flavors. So just like it smells, it's very complex mm-hmm. in the way it tastes. Um, you get that citrus, you get the pine, you get the floral notes, you get the grassiness, and then obviously the chocolate. There's a caramel to it. It's got an ashy finish on the end, too. There's a bit of a bitterness to it. I can't perceive, like, any alcohol, really. Yeah. I mean, it's only 8%, but still. Mm-hmm. It's very light, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it finishes super light. And there's just a little bit of, like, a chalky bitterness that finishes on the end. That actually comes across as, like, the chalky bitterness of when you eat, like, a high-concentrated dark chocolate. It's good. It's very good. It's very good. I mean, that's... Basically, that's what I was hoping to get out of that beer. Well, good. And how it was delivered. Thank goodness. Okay. Rinse this out. And the last beer is by Fourscore. Brewing, and they're out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and this is the Imperial Stout with coffee. With coffee, yes. And it's 10%. Oh, yeah. Back to the 10%. Yeah, and we picked this up actually at Fourscore when we went up there, when we were meeting up with Kyle Norman, when he gave us the Alchemist one. Ah. So there you go. Full circle. It connects. All right. Here we go. Gotta get that beer in the glass. Not a whole lot of head hanging out there. Yeah, this is a, probably the least amount of head we've had. Yeah, definitely. Definitely the least amount. And it pours It pours relatively thick. Looks like an Imperial yeah. Stout. Real no, really no difference. So I swirl it up and it gets more of a head to it. Not much at all, though. In comparison to these first three beers, that head retention is way down. Like, way, way down. I wonder if the coffee has something to do with that. I don't know. 
It could. It's very, oh very coffee. Whew. It's like, it's very green coffee. And when I get a certain level of a green coffee smell in a beer, it starts to get like green pepper yeah. as well. So it's like coffee mixed with green pepper. I really smell that with this. Mm-hmm. With the flesh of the pepper. And it almost, it smells like there's a bit of a spice character in there as well. Like, is there a low level, like, cinnamon kind of? Mm, I'm not getting that. It's a little weird. So much coffee, though, it's hard to get past that. It's really just what, one note for me on the nose. It is. Well, except for the, at least for me, except for that, like, green pepper smell. Yeah, I can't get, yeah, I can't get past it. It's like coffee, yeah. green pepper, and, and that's it. It is possible that the coffee is just, like, super concentrated in this and it could overwhelm everything else but we'll see i mean there's plenty of coffee yeah i don't love it so it's way thinner yeah than i would want it to be and i would assume it is i'm not perceiving alcohol though no, I'm not. I'm also not perceiving the alcohol, but it, it's got this. So it's it's that green coffee up front, and then it transitions to kind of like this sweetness yes. that has a bit of a tang to it. It's a weird sweetness. Yeah, it's a tangy sweetness, which is the best way I can describe it. Which is just it's odd. It's like coffee with way too much sugar. I I taste that, um, the, um, green pepper that I was saying I was getting in the nose. I'm not big on this. Yeah. It's not a bad beer, but. I think it's my least favorite. Yeah. I I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. Now. Do we have more than one of these? Yeah, I think we had bought a four pack. Oh. Um, so I will say this. Since we just slammed this beer. Because we didn't like it. Um, I do feel like I have to even it out. And if people haven't listened when we've had other four score beers on the podcast, we really enjoy four score beers for the most part. Uh, we've just decided that um, after trying a bunch of their stuff, we don't like four score stouts. We just don't like the way that the stouts get done. But everything else, we like it a lot. So there you have it. So, um,. To basically wrap up before we do our final ranking of these beers, I just want to say once again that we did this because we felt like this was a cool collaboration project. Also, how often are large collaboration projects done like this? Barely ever. I know it's been done like um, Sierra Nevada did the Resilience IPA Mm -hmm. where a lot of breweries got involved. I would guess that this got even more breweries, especially because I don't think Sierra Nevada had ones outside of the country. Maybe they did. Someone would have to check into that, but um, I don't think so. I think this one is probably more heavily participated in. But um, on the off chance that Marcus Baskerville actually listens to this episode, that would be awesome if he did. I want to say thank you for doing this. I think it's very important what you did. Uh, I think it's a very creative way to use the industry you're working within to have uh, to kind of force people to have important conversations. And uh, yeah. I think it's great. So good job and thank you. Anything you want to add, Rebecca? No. Just ditto? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you said it all. Okay. So now we'll just do the kind of hard, kind of not hard part of ranking these beers. I think for me and probably for you, it's very obvious and easy what's number one and what's number two. I think that's pretty simple. Um, do you know where you want to go with all of yours? Go ahead. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure. I need I need to do a retaste of two of them because I need I need to finish out uh, or figure out where my two and three go because it's pretty close between the two and three. Honestly, you mean one? You mean one and four? No, two and three. It's no, close. I'm sorry. You said it's, but at first you said it's pretty easy to do one and two. You meant oh yes, one I meant. and four. Yes, sorry. Okay, I did mean one and four. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks for correcting that. Okay, I think I, I, I know. I talk mine. so much on these that sometimes I just. 
just miss things. You you think you already know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Then. Okay. So my number four is going to be the four score. And that's the, the Imperial style with coffee. Yeah. My number three is going to be the Black is Beautiful by the Brewery. My number two is the Black is Beautiful by Monument City. Mm-hmm. And then my number one is the Black is Beautiful by the Alchemist. Okay. Um, I am almost the same. My number four is the Four Score. My number three is the Monument City. My number two is the Brewery. And my number one is the Alchemist. But it's so unbelievably close between the Monument City and the Brewery ones that... Obviously, I had to taste more of each of them. It's so close. They're almost interchangeable for me. But I think right now I'm giving the edge to the number two spot for the brewery one. Um, So, yeah. But I like them. They're very good beers. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, If you out there have had any of the Black is Beautiful beers and you want to let us know what you thought of yours, because I'm sure you had very different ones than what we had because there were so many done. Uh, I'd love to hear what people have to say about that. Even, I know that some people even changed it up and did, like, Trogues. I'm sad we weren't able to get there. So they actually did, like, a cornbread-inspired brown ale mm-hmm. based off someone's, like, someone they know's recipe for cornbread. That sounded really interesting and probably pretty tasty. So that's, like, an example of really, you know, putting your own twist on on that beer and, and doing whatever you want with the recipe as opposed to, you know, these stayed pretty close and then four score did the addition of, yeah, we'll throw coffee in there. So, um, but yeah, I'd love to hear if people have other ones that they're like, well, this brewery did something real crazy. So just email us brutal battle podcast at gmail.com. And yeah. Um, yeah. So also, uh, social media on Instagram, what brutal battle, brutal battle podcast on Instagram. And that's really the only social media that's being done. Because Rebecca's handling that. Uh, You can go to the website, BrutalBattle.com, and that way you can listen to all back episodes. Also, if you just search Brutal Battle on the website, archive.org, all the Brutal Battle episodes are there, too. That's our hosting site, basically. Uh, And then if you could do us the favor of doing ratings and reviews through whatever podcatcher you use to listen to this. And the big, big, big thing, word of mouth. Spread the word if you like this podcast at all. Let people know, hey, this is cool. You should listen to it. So... But other than that, thanks everyone for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal. I feel so-